and starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. One person is dead following an officer involved shooting this afternoon in Monroe County. Now, this is one of two shootings that happened in the Lackey community. One happened on Old Columbus Road and the other on McDuffie Cemetery Road. Our Quentin Smith, he joins us live in the studio with a breakdown. So, Quentin, do investigators say if these two shootings are related? Well, Scott, Sheriff Cecil Cantrell says the two shootings are connected. Now, at this time, there's still a lot of gray areas surrounding both of these incidents, but here's what we know so far. Sheriff Cantrell says this all unfolded around 2.30 today when deputies were called out to 50,421 Old Columbus Road. When they arrived, investigators found a body at the property. Witnesses on scene gave deputies a description of the vehicle the alleged suspect was driving. Well, deputies spotted that vehicle, then that's when the driver took off, leading officers on a chase. The pursuit ended on McDuffie Cemetery Road. Now, at this time, investigators are not saying exactly how the officer was involved with the shooting. However, we do know at least one person died from the shootings. Master Sergeant Chris Turnipseed says there's still a lot of evidence to come through. Right now, we got investigators up on the scene. They are uh, doing an investigation, conducting interviews, gathering evidence uh, at this time. Uh, all the findings that they get, any evidence they have, will be submitted over to the uh, district attorney's office uh, for district attorney's review. Now, since this does involve an officer, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is also investigating. They're being brought in to investigate the shooting involving an officer on McDuffie Cemetery Road, while the Monroe County Sheriff's Office investigates the shooting that happened on Old Columbus Road. Now, of course, we're going to continue to follow this developing story and bring you more details as they become available. Scott. All right, thank you very much, Quentin. In other news today, the lights are back on in most of Columbus after storms today left 1,500 people without power. A utility pole on Highway 45 near McDonald's was broken after high winds and rain swept through the area. Trees were reported down on Magnolia Circle, 31st Avenue, and Willowbrook Road. The good news, no injuries have been reported. Those storms continue to cross the state line into Alabama. Check this out. Strong winds destroyed this barn on Highway 16 in the Detroit area. That's in Lamar County. Folks in the area say they heard the wind coming and decided to take shelter. The city of Columbus is looking at outside help for storm debris removal. Multiple contractors are submitting bids, but what is it going to cost? Our Riley Livingston takes a look at what the city is planning. Cleaning up after a tornado is a monumental task. Tree limbs, shingles, and wood still litter the streets of Columbus, and now city officials are looking for some extra hands. But when picking the best fit, several things have to be considered. One of the things we'd be looking at is the, the cost of the bid, what the cost of the finish is going to be, and the services that the people are going to provide for you. There's a lot of things that has to go into a bid. Somebody comes in and puts a bid in, but they have to have the equipment. They have to have the manpower to make sure that that gets done in a timely, orderly fashion that is good for the city. It's not going to be cheap, and the initial cost will be coming straight out of the city's pockets. Well, uh, at this point, we're, it's what we're in right now investigating and looking at how we're going to pay for the debris removal in the storm. I mean, I think, you know, people have to realize that the city incorporated a probably about nine to ten million dollars worth of damage to the city. And uh, FEMA will only pay for 75 percent of that. Well, 25 percent of that 10 million dollars is a lot of money for the city to come up with. So we're looking right now into different avenues of how we can pay for that. The city is waiting for a federal declaration so they can move forward. Even after that happens, it could still be a while before they see any money. Now that is the great unknown. So we're trying to make sure that we're doing everything right on the front end and we're doing all the documentation right because at the end of the day it's all about documentation. And so that's where it's incumbent upon me and my team to make sure that we're doing that on behalf of the city to make sure everything is documented and everything is tracked. And so we feel like if we do everything right on our end, at that point the city's reimbursement can be better on the back end. The city approved a bid for a debris monitoring firm, but did reject removal bids due to a timing error. New bids will be accepted through Monday at 11 and will be presented during the regular council meeting on Tuesday. Time now to toss things over to meteorologist Jacob Riley, who has a first look at our forecast. Jacob, a busy day for you guys today. 
Hey Scott, it was a busy day indeed. Taking a look right now on our Alpha Insurance Sky Cam here in Louisville. A lot better picture than what we saw earlier today where we had that very intense wall cloud move through the area. Out there right now, though, things are looking pretty nice. We have some partly cloudy skies out there. Temperatures in the middle 60s across the area. No rain really to worry about. The last few showers pushing on through the state of Alabama. We, we do have a tornado watching effect there in Alabama with a few tornado warnings. Luckily, none of that here for us tonight or tomorrow. 60s and sunshine are back in the forecast. Coming up a little later in the show, I'll let you know how, let you know how long they're expected to stick around. Mississippi is one of several states considering a heartbeat bill. It would ban abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected. But a group gathered today to say they want the bill killed. Courtney Ann Jackson explains. For the people in the back of that house. Abortion! These advocates are calling on lawmakers to stop trying to further restrict their options. It was just last year that the state passed the most restrictive abortion law in the country, a 15-week ban. Now, a more restrictive ban is being proposed. No abortions once a fetal heartbeat is detected. Not only do you have to get your boots on the ground, it's come to the point, you guys, that we need to get our tanks in the streets. Not everyone just goes along with the rest of the views on abortion here in the state. Um, I am opposed to the whole bill. I think women need the right to choose. Government needs to stay out of my uterus and out of my body, and we should be able to decide what we do. Debates in the House and Senate have included questions about the likely legal challenge. Supporters say it's worth the price of another court case. It's incumbent upon us to do what we believe is in the best interest of the children born and unborn in the state of Mississippi, and that's what I'm trying to present this bill to do. But other lawmakers argue the bill won't accomplish that goal. This law will serve as a death sentence for the women of this state. We know that banning abortion does not eliminate abortion. It just makes it less safe and puts pregnant women and their families at risk. The advocates are planning to deliver report cards to each lawmaker based on how they voted on issues of women's reproductive rights. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Troopers in Troop G of the Mississippi Highway Patrol are still waiting to see if they will get a new headquarters Mississippi Highway Patrol Deputy Director Randy Ginn was in Columbus today briefing business and community leaders on what his department is doing. One hot topic, Troop G substation in Starkville. The main roadblock to renovation is funding. MHP is hoping to receive grant money this year. We're not able to provide all the services as efficiently and effectively as we'd like to for the public. We driver services, driver's license officers are very busy all across the state now. We don't physically have the room to expand the, the offices there at Starkville, so that would give us an expansion of, of uh, office space there, which would allow for us to do more driver services work and to get uh, the customers in and out faster and more efficiently. Troop G substation is the only one in the state to not be updated within the past 20 years. Two below council members approve a plan that will eventually put security cameras in all its city parks. Council members took that action during a special meeting this afternoon. Mayor Jason Shelton calls it a tool to help law enforcement access. With, access will be limited to law enforcement, that is, investigators and designated city employees. The video will be kept for 30 days unless it's needed for a court case. It helps us, um, you know, hopefully it will create more of a peace of mind in our parks, uh, protect the facilities of our parks, and just create a, um, a better uh, sense of safety and awareness in our, our great park facilities here in the city of Tupelo. Also, people who are in the surveillance video can request to view the footage. Six more days until the official beginning of spring. Tomorrow it's going to be very spring-like across the area, approaching the lower 60s. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know just how long that sunshine is going to stick around. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Riley. In case you didn't know, we had some nasty weather move through the area today. Here's a picture of a wall cloud here from Christine Wells out of Sulagin, Alabama. We also saw another very impressive wall cloud here out of Octoc, Mississippi for Mr. Jerry Patterson. Thank you all for sending these in. Some really good pictures out there here in Sesames, Mississippi near Shotgun Road. Sent in by Ken Shirley. Some tree damage there. Luckily, power has been restored to much of the area today. We did see a lot of wind damage. Hell reports, even a few funnel clouds. And look at this massive swath here of storm. 
Storm Reports. That's all associated with the same system we saw today, even out here across the Great Plains. That's the same storm system, so a very vast area. Saw some wind damage today, hell as well. Out there right now, though, in our neck of the woods, things are looking very peaceful compared to what we saw earlier. Some partly cloudy skies across the region right now, but we're going to see more sun move into our area over the next couple of days. And look at this top bullet point here. The stormy pattern is over, thankfully. I am so ready for that warmer weather and sunshine, just as I know you are too. Tonight, a little bit cooler. We will be dry there. Winds out of the west-northwest around 5 to 15. Could make things feel a little bit chillier out there. Those winds tomorrow are going to stay out of the west-northwest. They're keeping us at a cool 60 in Carthage, 59 Ackerman, 60 degrees there in Starkville. Those higher wind speeds could make those temperatures feel a little bit below what they actually are tomorrow. Luckily, no rain to worry about here in western Alabama, though. 59 Sullivan, 61 Reform, 61 degrees there as well in Asheville. But sunshine is going to be back tomorrow, thankfully. So get out and enjoy it here across the region. 54 Oxford, 56 Pontotoc, 57 degrees there for your daytime high in Houston. As we take a look at future casts, really no rain to worry about. We're going to see that sunshine filter on back into our area later this week. In fact, as soon as tomorrow, we'll see that sunshine return. Really no rain to worry about over the next couple of days. And taking a look at your rain chances, look at that. 0% all across the board. I know you are happy with that. I am happy with that. We need the chance to really dry out here across the region. We've had so much rain over the past couple of days, and we're going to have the sunshine to accompany those uh, drier rain chances as well. 60 Friday, 57 Saturday, 60s for Sunday and Monday. A weak cold front is going to move through late Monday night into Tuesday, dropping those temperatures just a little bit. But as we look more into our extended forecast here from March 22nd through the 29th, looks like we're going to have some above average temperatures begin to work their way back on into our area. Your seven day forecast looks marvelous. Really, we have sunshine returning to our area. A few clouds out there. St. Patrick's Day looking nice. First day of spring officially is on Wednesday of next week. Look at that beautiful high there, 64 degrees. Some teens in Tupelo are spending their spring break giving back to their community. We tag along with them when we come back. Watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back. All this week in Health Talk with Baptist, we've been learning about colon cancer and how to screen for it. Tonight, we find out about treatment options if you should get a cancer diagnosis. Hey, I'm Dr. Richard Hurd, part of the gastroenterology team at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Being diagnosed with colon cancer is a scary thing, but our highly trained and specialized staff can guide you through the next steps. With colon cancer, an early diagnosis is key. If it's caught early, we may be able to remove it completely during your colonoscopy. You may not even need chemotherapy or surgery, so get your colonoscopy. For more advanced cancer, surgery is almost always required. But again, if caught in time, surgery alone may be able to cure it. Once colon cancer begins to spread out from the colon, it becomes more difficult to treat. When this happens, chemotherapy or radiation therapy may be required. It may be used before or after surgery, depending on the size of your cancer. Sometimes cancer that is this far along is not able to be cured. You may still get chemotherapy or radiation though to ease your symptoms. If your colon cancer is caught in its earliest stage, your chances of being alive in five years is 74%. If caught in its worst stage, you have only a 6% chance. Don't let the fear of colonoscopy give cancer a head start. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. State and Ole Miss fighting to make the runs in the SEC tournament. Highlights come and more coming up next in sports.
sports coverage of the SEC Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Wade Incorporated. Bank First, a better way to bank. And visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Welcome into sports. I'm Courtney Robb. Mississippi State and Ole Miss both in Nashville competing in the second round of the SEC tournament, looking to make some runs and enhance their big dance resume. Starting things off, the Rebels with a rematch to Alabama, who, if you remember, knocked the team off over a month ago in Tuscaloosa. And what would start as a great first half for Ole Miss would quickly fade into a letdown once again against the Crimson Tide. Let's head over to the Music City as it hosts the SEC Ballers. The SEC Tournament kicking off play with the Rebels as they take on Alabama. First half, Rebels up by two. Terrence Davis with the seal. Devontae Shuler gets the ball and pushes the fast break, then finds three and Tyree in the corner for three. Ole Miss now leading by five. Almost halfway through the first half, Devontae Shuler on the wing. Step back three, going to be good. And the Rebels now with a 10 Point lead. The tie trying to cut into the lead. Kira Lewis Jr. finds a slashing Donta Hall for the jam. The Rebels now leading 24 to 18. Almost responding back. Coming out of the timeout, Terrence Davis finds Blake Hinson all by himself, who knocks down the triple to put the Rebs up by nine. The Rebels get the ball back again. A repeat Davis to Blake Hinson to knock down the three point shot like gravy on pork chops. The tray ball is going to be good. The Rebs go up by 12. And then before the half ends, Demonte Schuler putting on the moves. Hits up the mid-range J, and Rebs go into half, leading by 14, but the second half, a different story. Donta Hull with the flex on him dunk to tie the game up at 46, and Ole Miss trying to hold the lead. TD out on the wing, knocks down the three-point shot. A much-needed bucket for Ole Miss, but could it be enough? John Petty says, no, it's not, gets the one-hand slam, and jam Alabama with the epic comeback win to knock off Ole Miss. 62 to 57. The Rebels cap off their run in the SEC tournament very similarly to how the end of the regular season was. Big games were Ole held strong with the lead, but second half mistakes crippled the Rebels for yet another disappointing loss. The Rebels will now wait to see where the postseason will take them in the big dance. We settled uh, the first half. The ball moved. I mean, the ball moved. And what happened second half? We just kind of reverted back, revert back to old habits, and we did, and uh, that's why we got beat. So yeah, it was something that, no doubt, it is a concern. We got to clean it up if we're going to play an NCAA tournament here Thursday or Friday. It's hard losing, you know. You don't want to leave it up to the committee, but um, I saw a stat that said no team in a Power Five conference has ever not made it um, that had 10 wins in a, you know, in conference and 20 wins on the year. So. You know, it gives me a little bit of, you know, makes me feel a little bit better, but still don't like losing at all in any situation. Anytime you lose your first game in the time, you, you know, you always have that nervous feeling. So going to a center wheel, I for sure have a nervous feeling. Mississippi State taking on Texas A&M after Ole Miss finishing up the winter advances to play Tennessee first half state up by eight. Two Weatherspoon drives and dishes to Abdul Adu, the head fake in the bucket. State goes up by ten. The Aggies with the ball. Chris Collins misses the mid-range shot, but JJ Chandler gets the offensive board up and under move in the foul. State now up by nine. Lamar Peters on the inbounds ball to Eric Holman passes it back to Peters and finds a wide open Tyson Carter in the corner. Knocks down the three. The Bulldogs now up by 11. State gets the ball back again. Robert Woodard cuts to the hoop and makes the floater. The dogs now up 13, and Bully is liking what he's seeing, getting the claps going. Later, Lamar Peters in the setback move pulls the three, and it hits and goes down. State up by 16 now, and yes, 25 to 9 was the score at that time. Seven minutes left in the half. Tyson Carter drives, makes the floater, extending Mississippi State's lead. Now the Aggies get the ball back on the fast break. Savion Flag cutting to the rim, throws down the one hand. As he tries to spark an Aggie run. And then Carter would finish things off, but Mississippi State going on to get a big win in Nashville. The final in this one's going to be 80 to 54 over Texas AM. And like I mentioned before, the highlights the Bulldogs will go on to play Tennessee tomorrow in a rematch that the Bulldogs had 
struggled with earlier in the season. That's it for sports. Your last look is next. Stick with us. Some Duplo teens spend part of their spring break helping out in a helping out the community. The West Jackson Street Baptist Church Youth Group took part in several service-related projects, including volunteering at the Salvation Army. The kids helped clean up the clean up and prep the community center for a dinner. They say it's important to do what they can to put their faith in action. It's important because you got to give back to your community. Um, for me, the Salvation uh, the Salvation Army does a lot. I know a lot of people that's been benefited by it, and it's our turn, uh, not only as Christians, but as people in humanity in general, just to give back and say, hey, I've been blessed with this. Let me give um, some of my time and my effort to benefit somebody else who maybe need, uh, need a little more help. Well, she needed to come sweep my house the way she was sweeping. All right, the youth group also handed out gifts at NMCC's pediatric unit and cleaned the yard of a senior citizen. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Come clean, th come clean this up in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's going pretty quick. I well, mean. Well, your seven-day forecast, plenty of sunshine to do some outdoor cleaning, especially here in Columbus, those folks that were hit hard three weeks ago by the tornado. Plenty of sunshine, no severe weather in the next seven days. In fact, really no rain chances. Sunshine's going to stick around with those temperatures in the 60s. The news everybody has been waiting to hear. Yes, much overdue. All right, <laughs> thanks, Jacob. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.